Well, here's a question we get all the time. How do you get mail while you're out at sea? And uh, today we're gonna answer that question for you. The reality is we're not always at sea. A lot of times we are in beautiful anchorages like this one, and um, that doesn't make getting mail much easier, but we're not getting uh, drone deliveries offshore. Let's oh, just man. put it that way. <laughs> not yet, anyway, not yet. Um, yeah, today we're heading down into Palma to pick up some mail, and uh, we're gonna bring you guys along for the ride. So we always try our best to buy things locally, but sometimes you need something specific that you just can't find at local stores. For example, last week we were working on the solar panel and I needed to measure uh, the DC current coming through one of the cables and my multimeter doesn't have a clamp to do that so I went to the hardware store and picked this one up, but it only does AC. It doesn't do AC and DC. So we searched around the local hardware stores and even checked the one down in Palma and they didn't have what we needed, so I ended up having to order one online, and now, today, it should be arriving in Palma, so we're heading down there to pick it up after we return this one. Can I return this? Got this. over the years that there are three major ways that we grab mail as we're cruising around the world. The first one is preparing ahead of time, basically giving a heads up to what you're going to receive and by the time you make it to the marina or to the country that you're in, the mail is waiting for you. Yeah, this one's the most difficult to sort of schedule, especially for us because we have no idea where we're going to be tomorrow, <laughs> let alone three months from now. Yeah. So it's often the most difficult to sort of like drop your mail somewhere in front knowing someday you're gonna get there yeah but we almost never do that because it's just too complicated and we like the freedom of changing our plans the second one is knowing the marina that you're in so a lot of marinas if you're docked in in their facilities then they offer you mail service yeah they're usually pretty open and friendly about it too like i mean you're paying for a slip so yeah. they're usually happy to give you the mailing address of the main office and then it's really easy to get mail but 
you need to be waiting there for a week or two or three yeah. to get your packages delivered. Over the winter in France, we did that because we were at the marina for a couple of months, and so it was really easy to get mail, um, especially in Europe where you can get most things delivered in a day or two. Yeah, and that ties up as well to the prepare uh, prepare your ETA. If you know you're going mm -hmm. to a certain marina, you can call them in advance saying like, hey, I want a reservation for a slip. In the meantime, can I send some packages your way? We've done that quite yeah. a lot, and they always, always say yes. Always call them boat parts. We have some boat parts coming in. Yeah. If you say you're ordering like a pair of shoes <laughs> <laughs> or a new backpack. They might want you to be there first, yeah. Uh, the third one, which you've only done twice, but we are doing it here in Mallorca because, because we know we're gonna be on the island for a couple of months, we actually rented a mailbox here in Palma. Uh, yeah. The only other time we've done that was when we were in Florida. We actually rented a mailbox with UPS. Mm -hmm. um, but here there's a place called Mailboxes and I think it was about 80 euro for three months to have a mailbox. And the best part is it's right here in front of the transit station. And so from anywhere in the island, we can hop on a bus and within an hour, we can be here to pick up our mail and then pop back to wherever we are on UMA. Yeah. So it doesn't always work. It's not always convenient, but currently it's by far the best option. There is actually a fourth option, which <laughs> we, it's not the best option, but sometimes it's the only option you have and it's borrowing a friend's house, yeah. basically. Or maybe a patron. Yeah, right. so we've, we've, uh, we've been lucky enough to have friends and patrons that are super, super generous that who would let us use their mailing address to send mm -hmm. packages, but we found it to be a bit more difficult because mm -hmm. especially in the US what we what we came up to deal with is as soon as you put your name on an address they start receiving junk mails under oh, your name which junk is mail's the pain. worst so, and then they're still receiving junk mail yeah. months and years later and you can't cancel junk mail so it becomes a bit of an inconvenience and it's usually a pretty big ask um, yeah. so unless we absolutely need to we find it better to like use a marina or a, a post office box or something like that yeah and speaking of a uh, post office box we're about to head and pick up our mail AC, DC. So the cool part about these is they have a clamp and you can put it around a wire and measure the amperage going through that wire, which is something I've always wished I could do, uh, but never been able to do. I used to have one of these back when we did houses, but I don't know what happened to it. And it's been years since I've had a clamp meter. I'm really glad I have another one. All right, one thing that we're gonna do before we head back on Uma is consolidate it and get rid of all the packages because there's not really a big point carrying all the packages on the bus, then onto the dinghy, then onto the boat, just to open everything up, grab the packages, put it back on the dinghy, and head back to land to find a recycling bin. So we're just gonna take care of that now. In a park. In a park. <laughs> From this to this. <laughs> oh, you. Cool guys, everything is consolidated into this tiny little bag. This was a pretty small one. Sometimes we definitely get more. <laughs> yeah, but the reality is it doesn't really matter how we get our mail. It's always a full day adventure. Yeah. But now I think we've got everything done and it's time to head back on our boat. <laughs> hey guys, well now that we are back on the boat, 
after a whole day of male adventure. <laughs> Always takes all day. <laughs> Always takes all day. Sometimes it's just male. Sometimes we take advantage and do other things. Like if we're gonna be off the boat anyway, so we, we just stop and grab groceries or We only laundry. get off the boat once a day. Like that's our goal <laughs> is to get off the boat once a day. So once we're off, it's like we gotta do everything. Groceries, laundry, mail, whatever it is. Yeah, now that you guys know what it takes for us to physically go get our mail, let's talk about a few tips that we've learned along the way. <laughs> yeah, so we've been living nomadically uh, without a mailing, without a home base. We haven't had a residential address since we left school uh, but we haven't stayed still in a single country for more than six months for the last eight years so getting mail is one of those things that is just always a pain in the ass no matter how we do it and in the u.s it's really difficult not to get mail you always have to have a mail forwarding address and so it's so they can send you all the junk mail i think um but, but in the places, u.s yeah. but in the u.s i mean if you are in the u.s it's easier because you have all these places that you can send a mail to yeah but you always have to have an address that's the thing that's like true. our junk mail is probably still going to some poor person's house somewhere. yeah we apologize to all of our friends who ever got mail for us <laughs> sometimes it's easier and cheaper to fly somebody to where you are with a box of what you need than it is to yeah. ship the things where you are and i remember i, I hate i hate that that's real it's like, so crazy it blows my mind that it's cheaper to fly a human being than it is to fly a cardboard box that doesn't make any sense yeah when we were in curacao we were ordering a bunch of things and we ended up realizing that it was cheaper to fly dan's mom over to see us for a week for the suitcase. you know she gets a bonus vacation and then she yeah. just brings a suitcase for us yeah um, so yeah, just keep that in mind. Maybe it's the excuse you would need to have friends visit you and or then you if, pay their flights. Or if you're going to have friends visit you, just like tell them you're going to pay the extra 50 bucks for the extra check bag, fill it full yeah. of stuff you need and have them fly it over. Yeah. Um, that's if you have cruise shifts or something like that, that works really well. Yeah. But one more thing that we do as well, especially if we order a lot of things uh, throughout the year. And we know that we're going to be traveling a lot throughout the year and we're not going to be in a specific place mm -hmm. at a specific time. Um, sometimes we do send mail to our parents' address mm -hmm. and then once a year they make a little box for us that they ship to where we know we're going to be. And these usually are items that we don't need them like right yeah, away, yeah. like uh, like merchandise or things that we're trying to test out. You know, sometimes you just need it every or six months. sometimes like super specific skincare products for you yeah. or something where it's like yeah. no, like the stuff you can't just buy from the local pharmacy or the local hardware store. Mm -hmm. um, it, it's usually not that much stuff, but it's usually really specific stuff that like you just can't find. And ordering it one at a time and having it delivered and getting stuck in customs one at a time, little envelopes would be a it real sucks. pain. <laughs> and then what we have here in Mallorca, which we also had, where was it? Florida? In the U.S. In Florida. Yeah was just renting a mailbox yeah mm -hmm. and because we knew we were going to be there for some time we had a you know a three-month agreement with them and we were able yeah, to send everything yeah. that we needed directly to them and then we take the bus to palma just like you saw today and then we picked up everything that we need and then we're back yeah. on the boat one thing that we've learned the hard way is Try to avoid going with um, like local distributors if you're going to ship something internationally, Ugh. like USPS or Canada Post. Canadian Post, so. yeah, like local, like like the national postal service yeah. of the country you're in. It's going to take much, much longer, mm -hmm. and it's going to be like the problem is once that item lives, uh, lives. Leaves. Leaves. <laughs> Once the item leaves the country, you lose tracking. And yeah. sometimes you really want to make sure that your item is th at the place you need yeah. to pick up. If you don't care about tracking, like you're sending a postcard or a letter to your parents for Christmas or something, local couriers are totally fine. The local yeah. postal service. We use the one in France all the time. Uh, we use USPS sometimes. But yeah, as soon as it crosses the international border, no more tracking. So don't use it to send important stuff. Pay yeah. that extra money and use more than international DHL carriers. or uh, FedEx or, or UPS. UPS. These are yeah. the three that we usually go with. They're kind of the they're kind of the only three, three days. Really, <laughs> FedEx and UPS are great, and DHL like delivers like to your latitude and longitude. <laughs> like I swear, if if we sent them coordinates, they'd probably figure out a way to get it out to you. It's kind of impressive. Yeah. Um, One day it'll drop it with the drone and then just we'll pick it up on the boat. All right, guys. Well, that is it for this episode. I hope you guys enjoyed the few tips that we had about yeah. getting mail as a cruiser and a sailor and somebody who and people who don't have if you got mailing any, addresses. Yeah. If you got any questions or you think we missed anything, you know where to go. Yeah. And um, we'll make sure to read them and reply if we can. Yeah. But until then, we'll see you guys next week. Cheers.